Thanks everyone for coming. I want to ask all of you a question. Have you been sick any time in these last few months? Any? I have actually a couple of times. And did you have any, med any medication prescribed? Do you think that when doctors prescribe the medication, they know beforehand if it's going to work? What do you think? <laughs> well, no, they don't. They know that a medication works in a percentage of the population, 70, 80, 90, but they know nothing about the medication effect on you or on me. So in the worst case scenario, if the medication is not working, you just have to go back and you'll get another therapy. But now imagine that you don't have a sore throat or a headache. Imagine that you have cancer and the time in between the treatments can make a difference for your survival. As you may already know, in cancer, there's no time to lose taking shots in the dark, trying treatments that may or may not work. And that is why there is an increasing interest in developing personalized oncology. Every single tumor is biologically different, and there are many, many good options available out there to treat them. But how do we select the best approach for each patient? Well, the goal is to find biomarkers which is a really fancy way of saying that we want to quantify the biological differences between the tumors and use that information for decision making, which is, for example, selecting the best treatment. An ideal biomarker should be easy to perform, non-invasive, cheap, and able to capture the three-dimensional complexity of tumors. Can you think of a technique that ticks all the boxes? Medical imaging, no one? <laughs> Didn't the title of the presentation help for that? Because medical imaging can offer us a whole new world of possibilities in the field of personalized oncology. Since the early beginning, medical imaging has caused a revolution in medicine as a whole. You know, as the old English saying goes, seeing is believing. And indeed, since Redken found the x-rays, we didn't have to open the patients anymore to see if they had a disease. Isn't it mind-blowing? But yet, this was more than a century ago, and medical imaging needs to update for the ages to come, and I will tell you why and how. Medical images are beautiful pictures of the body, yes, but they are much more than that. They encode biological signals. Just to give you some examples, when we do an X-ray, which I assume everyone here has had one, when we do an X-ray, we obtain a map of densities of the body. When we do an MR, which is this big machine that is pretty loudy, when we do an MR, we obtain a map of the water content of the body. Then we can translate these physical quantities into a three-dimensional array of numbers called voxels. And each number here will represent a physical quantity. Then, using a specific software, we color the voxels based on their numbers, is more or less as we did when we were kids. And this is how we get beautiful images. I don't know if you can see them. <laughs> But um, remember what I told you before. Medical images are much more than these beautiful pictures. They encode biological information that we may be losing because we are only analyzing them visually and in the end, we just paint them artificially. So this is the shift that medical imaging will have to do in the 21st century, but let me talk to you now about how it is today. Today, there are many, and really trust me when I say many because I mean a lot. Today, there are many medical imaging scans performed to diagnose cancer. They are performed, they are visually examined by a specialist who makes a decision ba based on them, and they get stored forever in the computers of the hospital. End of the story. But can you remember what I told you at the very beginning? We are desperately looking for biomarkers that enable us to personalize therapies, and at the same time, we have hundreds of thousands of terabytes of images standing in the computers of the hospitals, encoding precious biological information that is crucial for our patient's survival. The images are already there, so they cost no extra money, no extra effort, we don't have to get any more samples or send anything to any lab. We just have to process the imaging, the images using software. And this field is known as radiomics. Radium stands for the electromagnetic radiation that we use to form images. And omics is a neologism that we have borrowed from molecular biology that means the study of a system as a whole. Therefore, 
Radiomics stands for uncovering biological information from images, extracting much more than meets the eye. There has been some software proposed, and I want to tell you today, in a nutshell, how this software works. Every single radiomic pipeline has three main steps. The first one is feature extraction. In this step, we get some characteristics from the tumor, such as, for example, intensity, shape, or texture. I want to emphasize how this step is quantitative, in the sense that we are not just saying the tumor is bright or the tumor is dark, the tumor is rounded or the tumor is not rounded. No, we are calculating the degree of sphericity. We are getting equations that tell us at each time what are we exactly measuring. Then, once we have these parameters, we fit them. We fit them into a mathematical modeling step where we train a mathematical model using the old data that we have in our hospitals. And with this model, we'll be able to predict what will happen to a new patient when he gets into the clinic. And we can predict things such as survival time or response to a treatment or how much time will it take to another cancer to appear. The results that have been obtained have a lot of potential. And there is one common conclusion, that is that those tumors that have an heterogeneous appearance will have a worse outcome. And this is not by chance. This is because heterogeneous appearance in the images is related with biological processes such as angiogenesis or necrosis that without getting into much detail are processes that make the tumors much more aggressive. And those are the patients that need harder therapies and targeted drugs. Now, I want to make a brief comment about a technique that is used today to start this treatment, which is a biopsy. For doing a biopsy, for those of you that don't know, we put a long needle straight into the patient, directly into the tumor, and yes, we do that in the 21st century, and we get a small piece of the tumor that is studied, and then a treatment is selected. But as you may already know, tumors are complex and heterogeneous in the three-dimensional space. So it may not be the best idea to base the treatment of a patient in a single part that may not well represent the biology of the whole tumor. And here is where radiomics has a whole new world of possibilities to offer, because in a really non-invasive way, we are able to capture the three-dimensional complexity of tumors. And that is why in most of the research that has been done, radiomics are able to outperform the scales used in biopsies. After 10 minutes, almost, talking about radiomics, I hope I have convinced you that it is the shift that medical imaging needs in the 21st century. But I know that many of you will be wondering, well, but if this technique is that good, then why don't we already have it? And well, the thing is that we are facing two main roadblocks. On the one hand, we need a lot of information to train our models to be really accurate. But since we are dealing with medical information, it is not that easy to gain access to such large uh, information. On the other hand, every single provider does the things a little bit differently. So it is not straightforward to translate a software or a model using a scanner here in London to another scanner in another part of the world. So as you can see, these two roadblocks are really big, but we are working on it because the results have the potential to disrupt how health systems manage cancer diagnosis. If some radiomic features could be validated as biomarkers in large clinical trials, we'll be closer to personalized oncology in a cheap and easy manner. This can be translated into higher survival rates and better budgeting of the health systems because we are not taking shots in the dark anymore. So, indeed, radiomics is how I imagine cancer diagnosis in the 21st century making use of the huge computer power we have today to personalize therapies and not letting images stand year after year in the computers of the hospital while they encode precious biological information that is crucial for our patient survival and that we are not using because we are only analyzing this one. Because seeing may be believing, but it's not the same as understanding. Thanks for your attention.